76 pounds. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, and the raffle used to get like somewhere near yeah. really good work of, of Mike and Carol, sometimes over, sometimes under. Um, but obviously, this, this room um, doesn't, doesn't cost us anything. So um, the importance of the raffle is you know, equally as important because we can use that money to get better lecturers and you know, backdrops, things like that, close up maps, all those things. So I appreciate people. Uh, Spending some money on the uh, on the raffle and thanks as ever to Mike and Carol for organising. And so uh, that brings us to tonight's uh, lecture, uh, which we're we're thrilled about. Um, really excited because uh, th this fellow has been a member for uh, for a while. Uh, some of you may have seen him uh, hosting some of the online quizzes that we did, um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to see what he's going to do tonight in his lecture. So without further ado, please would you welcome Charles Hankinson. <laughs> Stay standing and 
until I say, Ace of Clubs, Queen of Clubs, Three of Diamonds, sit down. Now I think what we'll do is we'll just actually um, try three different things here. All you do is you'll see there that there's a set of cards. Put your finger on any card you want. and turn to any page you want. Thank you. 
open it up and say the page number. Now, 144. 144. an A in your word? I'm sorry? An A. Yes. Where is it? Where is the word? It's in the third letter. Third? Yes. Is it an R? Yes. Really? Where? It's in the seventh letter. I'm sorry. Uh, it's repeated. It's the second and seventh. Okay. Um, so, while you're here, just ask them where that letter is. Where's the letter T? First letter. Train us with no mistakes. It is. Okay. So, first things first. I didn't actually know how that was going to go. At the beginning, I could not tell any of you where we would end up. Because that last part, there was actually four different possibilities. The first one, with Darren picking the piles of books. Completely a free choice. I just needed to know which pile he picked and what he was going to do with it. If he picked the other pile, I'd ask him to hand them out. But he didn't. He picked the pile that I wanted him to. How many people recognise any of these books? Yeah? <laughs> Steve? To be fair, Steve, I could have asked you the other pile because I actually had this one bought over it. I saw it, yes. <laughs> So, with it being split in two piles, 
I'm left with three magic prediction books. And that one. So all I needed to do was know which book he passed me. And I can tell by thickness whether it's that one, that one, or one of these two. This one, the other brothers have brought out book test. This is it. On the middle, all the pages are 144 and 145. That's a normal book. But if you look on page 145, the first thing it tells you to do is please draw me an elephant. There are eight false words in this book. All eight have got eight letters in them. I knew that right from the start, so I could have actually had it already on the book. Every single one of those eight has got the letters T, R, A, I and N. If the R appears twice, it's an anagram of trainers. If the R isn't in there twice, it's an anagram of triangle. I needed to remember two words. That's it. Ultimate flashback. This one has got the biggest kicker in the pit. What I'd like to do is turn to page 92 or 93 in the four books that were handed out. For those that don't know this one, it's very similar to that. Most of the middle pages have got 92 and 93 in. So all I need to remember is whoever's got the Terry, Terry Pratchett book, something to do with the army, something sergeant. Yeah, correct. Honourable discharge sergeant. Right, read the other page. Uh, recruit sergeant. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, yeah. Again, just a normal book. I just looked through a few of them and found something to remember. Steve's favourite book. It's got a group of pictures on it, uh, something to do with the Brat Pack if you look in the bottom corner. Yeah. Yeah? Slide sheet. <laughs> One page has got four small pictures, the other's got a group of portraits. But I don't point out which one it is. I just remember that it's a portrait of several people, or several, yeah. in a picture, and it's a backpack. Right. On yours, if you look at those two pages, you'll see a photograph. Yep. Looks a bit like a hotel. In fact, it isn't a hotel, it survived. It's Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, of Walt Disney World. It's the only photograph on those two pages. And this one, my favourite. In fact, Phil, yours is too big for me to even picture it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trust, trust me, Darren. You're not the first or last thing for all that. In fact, I'm getting this. It's, I'm getting this in little pieces. It's almost like sort of building blocks, like Lego. But it isn't Lego, is it? It's the building pyramid. Correct. It's a big picture, isn't it? It covers more than one page. That's right. Page 92 and 93 covers a nice little picture of a group of people building a pyramid. Not only these four are actually meant as false books. They're just normal books. I just happened to look at what was on those pages. Sometimes, look at what you've got yourself.
and this one. Do you know this one, Derek? No. No. Video Mind from Max Maven. Thank you very much, Derek. No. In Video Mind, he does a, a book, and in the prediction, he basically draw a woman with hair and write the word fake. Five times in that book, it will appear. You just need to know what, what, what page numbers are. I've got my simple pad in there with those five page numbers on it. I was just going to flip over the pad after getting five people from the right numbers there. But the thing is, the main point I'm bringing forward right now is nobody here knew where it was going. So I didn't have to have one way it was going to go. Sometimes we've got to remember we know where it's got to go. <coughs> and I'll tell you this now, you lot have all really annoyed me this month, uh, tonight. Do you guys want to know how? I'd written a prediction earlier and put it in here. A nice little prediction that says No one will have a trick to show us, so I will start my lecture at 7.45. Thanks, you blew it. But the thing is, you didn't get to see that at the beginning. Nobody knew it was there. I just wrote it on the off chance that nobody had put a trick in. And I'd be, on, I'd be starting at about 7.45. But imagine how you lot would all feel if I had started at 7.45 and nobody bought tricking. At the beginning, we started with three chairs. And they each moved to a different chair. If you actually think about it, the person in chair one can only move to chair two or three. <coughs> If he moves to chair two, in order for everybody to be in a different chair, person in two has to go to three, and three has to go one. If the person in one goes all the way to three, the only way it can happen is three goes to two and two goes to one. There's only two outs for the whole thing. See the piece of paper. Three envelopes, and if needed, a card. You can remember it however you want. The way I do it, or try to remember, is if you take away, you take the card out. So if you're going from two to one, you take the card out. If you don't, you turn it over. And, if you can't remember, take it out and do as I did and look at the number and go, oops, I should be turning it around. Because <laughs> to be honest, I completely forgot. I haven't performed this trick now for 22 years. The last, uh, not the last time I performed it, time before that, was on a stage, just a few minutes walk from Euston Station, a nice little, little back alley, and I'm not trying to show off, I'm trying to teach you some of this, because you all heard the nice little x files tune, and it just kept playing and kept playing and kept playing, on that night, I told them to play track one, followed by track two and repeat track two. And during the middle of that performance, it started going, they're drilling into my damn teeth, and loads of dentists drill music as track three started playing. <laughs> After that, I have learned. And on 
the stick that's on there, I've got the X Files theme tune repeated about six times one after the other. And the whole routine we saw first of all with the three people up here, that takes around about 10 minutes. So I know it's not going to overrun. So I know I'm not going to run out of it. Try and learn from things that go wrong. The only thing I could do on that night was turn around and say, sorry about the music, it's as crazy as I am. And that was it. Now, Wayne Johnson says when you're doing the three car trick, do it what get them to sit down one at a time after you've named the cars. I don't for the fact that it's the middle part of the trick. Because to be fair, all they had choices of were the Queen of Clubs, the Three of Diamonds, <laughs> and the Ace of Clubs. <coughs> all the way through. But, I swapped the deck over before putting it on the table. And you've already seen this type of deck tonight. So what can smooth one way for it? I've actually handed this out to a layman and said, just put your finger on any card, bring it to the top, and make sure you take the top card. Don't take two or three, just make sure you're taking the top one. And they actually split it themselves and took the card. Sometimes, as Alex said, if you are ballsy, you can get away with it. So that's exactly the same deck as you saw earlier with the swan on it. The other part is a mental epic. Um, I got my alphabet slightly wrong. I do apologise, you are absolutely right. It's the seventh letter of the alphabet, G, not A. That's where I went wrong. This book is Vincent Hedman's Babel book. Has anybody got it? Yeah. I am not lying, the instructions are on something like 50 pages of A4 for this one book. There are that many effects in it. I can't remember them all. The two that I remember are the first word on this page is the last one on the second line there. So all I did was get this just look at the page and I just looked at the second word and wrote down faith. The first three words on every page tells you the page number. Between 1 and 200 and then 300 to 400 were repeated. So I just needed to know whether it was in, because it was 100 and something, whether it was near the front or near the back. And I just look at where it was keeping the page. That one can be expensive. I think I've seen it at about £100 on eBay, plus postage from America, and there are three different versions of the book. The um, Deadly Sin book. This one. If you buy this one, I can't tell you whether it would work anymore or not. I bought this originally from Britain. Didn't work. We had different numbers of words on each page, and therefore the five page numbers you got from Max Maven in the video didn't work. I had to get this one shipped from America. So if you do try and get hold of this, you'll need to get the American version of the book. If you want to know the page numbers, I'll be giving away. Okay, what time are we on? 25 past nine. Okay, I'm going to pick on a lady. 
Yes, the only one who has to actually be chosen gets that. And he needs us to look after that. Okay, so. I think we should have something scary for the evening. A little murder. Has anybody uh, good at reading? Has got their reading glasses with them or not? Tell you what, you get the easy job and you get to pick who gets the difficult job. Okay? Anyone you want. So I'm choosing someone for a difficult job, all right? Yeah. <laughs> somebody somebody who's gonna solve a murder. Sam. No, we need somebody who's gonna be able to solve a murder. No. <laughs> Come on, Sam. solve a murder. Okay. You already know who did it. You already know where they did it. And you already know what they did. In fact, you dreamt about it the other night. But like so many dreams, you've forgotten. But you will remember by the end of the evening. Okay. Let's start. Do you want me to just read out this, Charles? Yeah. Okay. Murder is on the menu tonight by Charles Hankinson. Next page. It's not a best-selling book, don't worry. Chapter one. How to identify the murderer? Exclamation mark. Only eight people were there at the mansion that evening. Mrs. White, Colonel Mustard, Reverend Green, Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, Mrs. Peacock, the victim, and the only witness. The detective will help us eliminate most of the innocent people, but not all of them. Okay, so we have one slight change. I can have my daughter's Cluedo Junior pieces, and instead of Mrs. White, we've got Dr. Orchid. So if you get a peachy one, it's Dr. Orchid. Okay, but we've still got Professor Plum, Reverend Green, Mrs. Peacock, Colonel Mustard, and Miss Scarlet. Do you uh, <coughs> take anyone out? Is that a body bag, Chaz? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is called recycling. Nice lovely big parcel. It was either going to be this or a bag of sweeties and I didn't trust them with the sweets. Can just take one as well? In fact, I think we'll just set the last two up there for now. Okay, so we've got three tables. Table one, table two, and table three. Pick two tables. These two. Those two? Yep. Okay. Put those on the table. Out of those two, pick one. The oh, final one? Yeah. Okay. A little suspicious. Put yours on the table. So, we have eliminated four already. Colonel Mustard, Dr. Orchid. That's good, we don't need to worry about Mrs. White anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Plum, Mrs. Peacock. So that leaves us with. <coughs> so, can I have your key, please? 
grab any one you want. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Chapter two. It's a good fun start. I don't actually need my glasses. <laughs> How the witness knew who did it? Exclamation mark. The witness followed a few simple instructions to enable him or her to witness the murder undetected. Number one, the witness started wherever he, she wanted to inside the mansion. Point two, he, she then moved horizontally or vertically one square at a time. Point three, firstly spelling out the name of the room where they started plus one extra move to stay one a step ahead of the murderer at all times. Okay, so I feel that. Let's pick any room you want. The lounge. Okay. One square at a time. Mm -hmm. Horizontally or vertically. Spelling mm -hmm. out the lounge. Okay. Um, L. Yep. O. U. N. G. And what was the other bit? And then, firstly, spelling out the name of the room where they started, plus one extra move to stay one step ahead of the murderer at all times. Okay. okay. Library. Right. What next? So it was still chapter two, and it was how the witness knew who did it. And this is point number four. As no one was left in the extremities of the mansion, the following rooms were locked. The ball room, <coughs> yep. the billiard room, and the dining room. Okay. So you were where? The library. Okay. Mm -hmm. Point number five, the murderer moved through three more rooms, as did our witness. Point six. Wait, so move three more times from the library. Uh, one, two, three. Okay. The kitchen and the study were now closed off as well. Okay. Good job, you weren't in any of that. Mm. The murderer finally moved through four more rooms. So move through three more rooms to find out which room the murderer will strike and to allow yourself to find somewhere to hide. You were one step ahead, weren't you? Yeah. So I'm now doing, what, three or four? Three. So one, two, three. Because you've got need time to hide. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's library, library. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The final chapter, I think. So which you were hid in the library. Yep. Okay. Which weapon was used? Exclamation mark. We have a list of the possible murder weapons. These have been printed onto luggage tags to enable you to pick one. Okay. So we have a wrench, a revolver, lead piping. Candlestick, dagger, and rope. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just grab a look at your tag. The candlestick. Okay. Is that the end of the book? Uh, there is, underneath the sheet, there's an envelope. An envelope? Yeah, an envelope. And it's actually, it's um, a monogram, with your monogram on it. Go on then, open it. Okay. <coughs> Kill me. Oh, it's sealed as well, in like oh. flames. <laughs> it's got flames. Chapter four, the final chapter. The detective would like to thank you for your help in solving the murder. You see, without your help, that he would not have convicted Reverend Green of the murder, which, by the way, did take place in the library and was committed with the candlestick. <laughs>
going to mention Max Mayer again. In video mind, he does go through one with five, uh, I think it's four or five pebbles uh, white and one black one. And he has to guess who's got the one black pebble. Exactly the same method I used for handing these four out. All I did was hold mm -hmm. red and green in the palm of my hand and hold it against the envelope. So the first four people had the choice of these five. Because I had hold of it. The last table, as I was handing it over, I just dropped it in. And there was only the two in there. It was red from green and one of these five. I didn't know who had red from green. But the thing I did know is it was on that table. If you'd have picked these two tables, thanks very much, put your pieces on the table. Basic magician's choice. If he includes that one, the first one's going to be got rid of, and then he either chooses one or the other two, and uh, he eliminates this one, leaving us with that table, or he leaves that table, eliminating this one. So again, I'm controlling it, and I'm just picking one up, and all I did was, first things first, I told him to pick up a piece. The easiest one is the one right next to him. The one that makes it look <coughs> least awkward for me. If he reaches over and that says that one, I say, fine, you're leaving me with this one. But chances are, he's going to grab the one nearest him, which is the one I want him to. The second one. The runes. If you look at the runes on a clue door board, three of them have got even numbers. Six of them have got odd. I've got three versions of this trick that I can do. But all of them will end on an even number. So I've got different pages for the book. One of them literally says different rooms of the moon. And all I've got to do is know which order I need to put those cards into place now. And if you put them in a triangle, then you have the outside ones are all odd, the next three are the three even, and the one in the bottom middle is odd. And the way it was done, you would always end up on an even one. Can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Do you know when you say odd and even? Sorry, maybe I'm being stupid here. Do you mean the number of letters in the word for the yeah. group? Right. So, hall is four. Library. Uh, seven. Oh, wait, sorry. No, it's the other way around. You've got three odd ones and all the rest are even. As long as you've got a combination, you can do it. Another one that's quite often is a square. And what you'll have is odd numbers in the sort of pips on the card, <coughs> and the other four, <coughs> or the other way around. And depending on how many times you'll move, will depend on which ones you just get rid of. And that's how they're all nearly all done, so you can make your own one. I just chose Pluto because I wanted something that was a bit spooky. And the last one, does anyone know how this was done? Yeah, yeah. there's a few of you. Um, it may come as no surprise to some of you. We've got the rope. Oh, we actually picked the dagger. But in the middle of here, 
it's literally an envelope with the top bit cut out and a lovely tap that's near enough the same colour. Just print them out and all I did was printed out about seven of each word. And that way you've actually got all six different weapons that you can choose. So if you know that you're going to be going back to a club or something like that and doing a show a bit later and you think there might be a couple of people who are doing the same show, the six different weapons, the six different characters, you can choose three different rooms. How many different combinations can you get out of that? That you could make a different combination each time you go. Is there any questions on that one? Charles, may I have a quick look at how you've done that, how you made that? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Just put a little knot in the end of the luggage sack so they've got something to grab onto. And when they pull it, when you've got some in your hand, turn half of them over so you've got half facing the other half. So if they do pull the end one out, they don't see it coming out of the envelope, they just see it's coming out of the middle. Sorry, I don't know if I missed this because I was staring forwards. Um, do you mix those up before they then choose one? Because obviously if you've shown them the order when you tell them all the different <coughs> ones, and then they pick someone from the middle, but they knew it was the one at the end. Does that make sense? So that's why mix them up? when I turn them over, yeah. I just actually mix the strings around so you can't see which ah, one okay. right. is which. Right, okay, I'm with you. You can mix them up as well if you want yeah. to. Cool. But uh, I've never had anybody question. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering if you shuffled it, I I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, when I was waving it in front of you, the strings were down jiggling about. That was me mixing it up so you can oh, see. Oh, right, right, sorry. Okay. What's well, so the candlestick here? Yeah? The other envelopes. Yes. The only one. So here we've got the bench. Candlestick. And if I actually did the full lecture, so I was going to do it twice, I actually had um, lead piping ready for doing it a second time completely confuse you all, I actually had to get a different set of answers to when I repeated the trick to show you, and you just go, wow. So even trying to do it tonight, if I was going to do it twice, I was trying to actually think of ways to catch you out as well. Okay. Right. Choose somebody in the back. You've been sitting quietly right at the very back, haven't you? Completely being ignored by everybody, and I'm breaking more than money rules in making everybody turn around. <coughs> you know there's a solution to this, don't you? What is it? Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'll take you for being late. <laughs> Deck of cards. There you go. Open. Uh, have a look, see if there's any jokers. Okay, so you've got a card. I don't know what it is. But what I do know 
these old cards are on two, three, four or five of these. And I made a prediction earlier. I'll tell you where the prediction is. <coughs> in that case. Have a look through those. And if your card appears, keep it to yourself. If it doesn't, just pass it here. If I'm right, his card will appear on three. It's not on that. If I'm wrong, it will appear on two or four. But then again, if he's left with three at the end, there are still 23 which appear on three cards. How many have you got? Three. You've got three? Okay, so that's a good start. <coughs> you see, in that box, there is a deck of cards with one card facing the wrong way. Now, during the break, I ask people to write something they will take on holiday on a piece of paper and put it into that box. I want you to open the box. Give them a quick shuffle, I don't want you uh, just picking them up. Happy? Yeah. Okay, so on the table, you'll notice that the two sides, the triangles, they've actually velcroed down to stop me getting that. So I'll open them up, lift up the top flap, and you'll see a nice little red tag, just grab over that and pull all the way over, and then grab any of those pieces of paper. <coughs> Happy? Okay. Whatever it is that you've got, we now need a colour. So if you've got a passport, you need a coloured passport holder. If you've got a phone, you want a phone colour. That sort of thing. So we've got here a group of um, coloured ribbons to grab one. Happy? Yeah. What colour have we got? Yeah. Purple? Yeah. Purple. Or as they would say, orchid. Right. <coughs> so, orchid or purple, and what's the item? Bow tie. Bow tie. Okay. Card. Bow Purple. Right, okay. Um, can I have a couple of objects from the some different tables, please? So, it could be anything. It could be a wallet, a card, okay. a can, yeah. A can. A keys. Yeah, on it. To be fair, it was a good throw. <laughs> If somebody's passing a glass, please. <laughs> Glasses. Now, you may not see this next bit, but it'll be great. <laughs> a watch. Um, four items, grab any two. So, so watch in the camp. Pick up the other two. And as I'm going past, just pass me one. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what have we got left? Keys. Keys. Okay. No. <laughs> We've not practiced that, I swear. <laughs> Okay, so we've got four things chosen. 
um, a card, a bow tie, purple. Okay. Have you managed to open the box? <laughs> you haven't tried? No. Oh. Well, you'll see that it's a combination lock. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. And they say you shouldn't ask a young lady of age. So, it's in weight, in stones and... <laughs> no, no. What are you doing? <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. But it is your age. Or rather, the year that you were born. Now, I don't want anybody else to know, because, of course, you know, being about 40 years old is going to make it a lot easier. <laughs> There's a, there's a line along. This way, yeah. Steve, stop filming for people. Steve, stop looking at somebody's... Yeah, this way with the camera, stop. <laughs> So has anybody got another trick to show? Yeah. <laughs> you should have picked a younger person that can say... That's all right, take time as well. Hey. Hey. Uh, hey. Okay. Yes. So if you'll uh, open up the box. your card. You see me? No. Because it's facing the wrong way. Oh, there we go. What was it? The Queen of Spades. Not the Jack. things on this. First things first, he had a completely free choice of which card he wanted. There was no force. This is an invisible deck. All I needed to do was know which card he's picked. It's not a marked deck. Could have used a marked deck, but sometimes what I'll do is actually get them well over there. I'm nowhere near them. They put them in the box, apart from the one card they keep in the pocket. It's actually, this that tells me, all cards of 
appear on three of these. I got these from Blackpool years ago. I always use this with the invisible deck. The invisible deck is a good one, but I use this kind of pretending, you know, I've made a prediction it might be right or wrong, all up here on three. But I can quite clearly see that all three of these cards have got on them the Queen of Hearts. If I take out a different card, and I straighten it up. Six times. So all that stuff about some cards appearing on two, some appearing on three, some on four and some on five, it's a lot of rubbish. They all appear on three. I know that, but he doesn't. I made up that there's like 26 which have got three cards. To be fair, all 52 are on three cards. It just makes the Jeopardy sound a bit better, but when I get to the end, it does mean that kick there. So what I'll do is I'll separate the two tricks as much as I can. So if I was actually doing a full lecture tonight, we'd have had this as the finale and in the first half, he'd have been picking a card. I then had five objects, or four objects, whatever it was. Anybody know the biggest secret in that? No? One person does. What? Yeah. Uh, the one where I've got the four, the four items, the can, the watch, the glasses, the keys. You have to someone that key, possibly. You won't get the keys from the Yeah. Who do you ask? <laughs> Alex on a phone call earlier today. I asked him, if nobody passes me a set of keys, just pass me a set of keys. I did a job for Masons, just so happens that my dad was the uh, person who arranged it, was on the head table, and so I just made sure his partner had a set of keys that night. It's the only time I used a stooge, and even then, sometimes I don't need to, but I'll tell you this now, that night at Masons, they definitely needed a stooge. How somebody had a tea bag with them. Yeah, that face said a, a tea bag, a tea bag. I ended up being handed random objects from every table and I had a tea bag. Now, you picked any two of the four objects and passed them to me. I then got you to pick the other two up. What did I do then? I knew the keys were on this side. He'd already passed me the um, can and the watch. So I was walking around here with the watch, getting ready to hand it back, because a lot of the stuff was from this side. Which, naturally, if I ask him for one more object, which is he going to pass me? The glasses, he's going to leave himself with the keys. How natural did it look? I said, just pass me one more object. And he passed me the glasses and I just walked past them back. Would I have done that if the glasses, had, if the keys had been on the left hand side? No, I'd have stayed over there. <clears throat> Sometimes, just making the slightest change while you're performing can make things look even more natural than they would be. And the more natural you can make them look, the more convincing they can be. So with regards to the box that we had out, we had the two piles. Once I got those four boxes handed out, the choices didn't matter. It was all completely natural. So if he said, if he picked them up and handed them out, I could have then turned around and said, right, there's two piles of two there, pick a pile for us to discard. 
pick one of those two books now for us to use. So you keep, when you're using that force, if you've got that many things going towards you as well. The first one isn't natural, but the words that you use for the rest of them can make it all natural. Thank you very much. What would you do if you did hand you the keys? If you, had if you did hand me the keys, yeah. I wouldn't have taken them. Yeah. I said, said hold, hold one out for me or something like that. But I could see that when I was moving around, he was getting ready to pass me the glasses. I could almost see it. Mm. But with the, the other one, there's only the two objects in that in the clue though, the red and green and Miss Scarlet it was. So I'm holding two, and if he leaves me with the one that I need, fine, that's the one I'm left with. Okay? The other one I could have done was with the keys. If he'd have passed me the keys, grabbed them, put them on the case as I passed the watch out, and asked him on his way past, just to pass you the glasses. Nobody here knows what the outcome's going to be. So, if you leave it as open as you can, as far as they're concerned, sometimes you can get away with miracles. Other times, you get seven people who say, we'll show a trick and you go. <laughs> but, occasionally you will have that one thing that if you set it up beforehand, could be anything. You could say, you know, I'll finish the third, first half at like 8.32. <clears throat> and if you've got a clock at the back, do your best to make it last to 8.32. If you don't hit it, don't show them the prediction. Yeah? So any questions? Sure. How, how did the lock work? How did the lock work? <laughs> I looked at her, decided how old I thought she was. <laughs> no? no? Oh, you're not buying it? Okay. Um, the padlock, only the first two digits were. So providing they're over 21, it unlocks for them. Yeah, they were gone. As we get older, it will get harder to use. If you'd have known that, she would have spent so long making all the digits no. like that. You know? <laughs> 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 to be fair, I've mixed it up now, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Mighty no, no. Uh, no. But yeah, you are apt. As I said, I mixed it up. So, yeah, the first two digits are the only two that count. So it's actually set for 19. So provided you pick somebody who's born between 1900 and 1999, you're fine. And I pretty much knew that I'd be all right in this room. He knew not to pick you all on you. I said pretty much. So, yeah. Um, you'll notice as well sometimes I'll actually try and use stuff that I find all over the place. This chain that was wrapped around the box, it's a Siberian chain escaped from a chapel's magic set. It's too small for me so I can't use it, so I used it on this. Toolbox. Poundland, thanks very much. No joke, one pound. How many magicians here have got an invisible deck? <laughs> well, I can tell you what I do for that. What I used to do is on the joker, write the name of the trick and put it on. 
So I'd put invisible deck and have the joker slightly sticking out. So I'd just lift it up and see what the deck is. But to be fair, I've got that many decks, they're all like that now. But I can tell this invisible deck. If you just close in on the uh, barcode. Uh, Invis. My invisible deck. Um, this one. TW, three way. Three way four step. It's still got the sticker on the top. I told you. Ace of clubs, three of clubs, and three of diamonds. I've done that with most of my decks, and if you do it in black on the barcode, you can see easily because you're looking for it. To most of the people, they're not going to bother with the barcode on deck of cards. So if you've got an invisible deck, a three-way force deck, pop item, one-way force deck, you've got a brain-way deck, you've got all these, you've got them in your drawers. If you've got the barcodes up, you can see which ones are standard decks, which ones are your trick decks. It makes it a lot easier to find them. I've got a drawer with decks of cards that big. All with them with barcodes up. Stripper decks, STR. I've got about three, um, three strip decks in there. I've got a couple of invisible decks. I've got a couple of mental photographies, which are MPs. <laughs> if you can find a way to make it easier for you, use it. I can go in my case, have a look at the side of a deck and see if it's a standard deck or not. And if it says something like strip, I can use it for a strip. Strip a deck. What time are we on? Because I know we were only about 10 o'clock. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. yeah we'll the box. The box. This is Mark Shotman's Amaze Box. Just pick a piece of paper out from there. Okay. All oh, three bow ties. Yes. Oh my God! What a surprise! But one thing that I did do with this box. If you look, when I was doing this earlier, I actually folded the pieces of paper in different ways. Some of them getting as close and neat as I could. Some slightly off. Some folded uh, widthways and then lengthways. So you've got different shapes. So the person looking in the box sees a lot of pieces of paper that are randomly mixed up. They're not all the same. And I know we've had one of these at the club before. It's a lovely piece of origami. And you see that flap that's coming down there? When it's down, there's a set of papers in there. They're actually the mixed ones. They're all yours. And when you pull on this tab, it pulls it out of the way and just gives them one that I forced earlier. These, those pieces of paper were in there from before you lot arrived this, this evening. In fact, they were in there from 10 o'clock this morning. I just added the tab on there to say just grab the red tab and pull it all the way over. And same with that, I've just added some red tape on. But I've used that a few times. I've seen it used before by other people, and Steve will not mention any names at the time, <laughs> where everybody put a name in the box of a film. And it was very obvious it was a force because he made a DeLorean with 
appeared on the stage in the Back to the Future. The way I used it was adding that many things on top of one another that this doesn't become an issue anymore. Because you're not only thinking about how you got bow tied, how did you get purple, how did you get the card, how did she, how did you get the right, you know, the, all of it added together gives you that many things to think about. You can't concentrate on one. And that's it. Thank you.